bit of a highlight, oh, no. don't you? As We've we do look over the media with the rec and with the quap even to a lesser extent i'm feeling pretty confident about this meteor gaming draft yeah i yeah i am as well i don't i don't know what we have in store for, for the draft on cactus which is i don't know is it a concerning thing because again this is a team that is undefeated series wise and now they're coming into this game one with a, a very very wonky draft so We'll, we'll see. We'll see if they're going to be able to capitalize. Maybe they've got something up their sleeve that we are uh, we are not aware of just yet. But we'll uh, we'll see how this game plays out for them. Maybe we'll we'll see. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see. It's got to be a magic SF build, yeah. No, no, he's the. I think he's the carry. It's still butterfly effect playing it, right? Yeah. But you're just so, thinking they're lacking magic to do with timber, and he's just going to run him over. Yeah. Also yeah, fly, kind so. of. Like going, I don't think the Shadow Fiend's gonna have a good time to play versus the Slark if you can't right click him. Like if Slark gets Ag Shard and is decently farmed, then he's gonna have his issue with standing his ground. And that's kind of one thing we brought up. Like if the SF can't right click people, then. 30 seconds Look at how much damage we've got around this mid lane, by the way. Two Observer Wards planted down for this, kind of both revealing the same sort of information. They're like, come on. Someone step <laughs> forward. We see you, Quap. I mean, if they're able to force Quap to go into like an early level of fleet, that's going to be huge. They might have gotten a little bit too eager here, though. And well, they are going to be able to avoid this uh, this kill. Let's see if they can test it, though. Do you mean to get this a triple decay? I think maybe some more people would come over for cactus, but. Uh, that's not going to be the case. So looks like it will be a three for one in the bounty room department actually this is going to be very confusing we've got tz on the snap file and then we've got tz y on the queen of pain god damn it what are they doing to us why would they do that i don't know <laughs> and it's going to take a little bit for tz y to be able to get up no no That's right there's four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. No, that was five, actually. But uh, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah, as you should feel bad. What's uh, what's going on in here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just sitting inside of the jungle right now, really not knowing where he wants to go with this. Like he's like, do I go top? Do I go bottom? What do I want to lay it up against? But I mean, this is kind of what you should have been expecting, right? You should know. But maybe it's just the fact that TZY has taken so long to get up towards this top side. But he's not fine at all. What are you doing, Slark? Uh, so they're looking to avoid a matchup. <laughs> is Slark wanting to... She's a quap now. What's going on? What, what, I don't know. Do you feel like Slark <laughs> is wanting to avoid the Queen of Pain and lane into the live still? Or did they, did they want the quap to even lane into the team bomb? Maybe that's a little bit better for Radiant? I mean, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know what mm -mm -mm is doing. Like, you, sure, you might not want this lane, but TZY has gotten a full level. Uh, sorry, TZ has got a full level of this, and almost TZY. So I just feel like you gotta you gotta cop it, right? The lane isn't gonna go too badly, but I still feel like you've got the edge for the game. So like, uh, they're just a bit of an opportunity to get some of this experience and now Quop's going to have a little bit of a lead but they'll see that Dark Pact is the thing that's leveled up at level one so TZY still hasn't put even a single point in just yet so I wonder if he's looking to go like early screen the pain start to get a little bit more active in that way okay that could be a nice thing as well with uh, the Queen of Pain if you do kind of go down this dagger route you are very those Your game plan is you know. all in on winning the lane, and if you don't do so, and especially as an off laner, then you're not really going to have the levels to start to put points into the stream and the blink once it gets to the early game, so... Uh, maybe it just feels like maxing out scream is going to help with this little bit of farming, a little bit of new potential as well, so... Um, we'll see, I actually, I like what he's doing so far. He's also going into an urn, so... Guessing that that's going to become a. Can we go Spirit Vessel into the Timbersaw? Like, that might be the little bit of damage that they need. It's not like he really wants to buy a BKB. Not really a early Lotus Fire this game. It's the only utility he's going to provide is basically up against that, uh, that Spirit Vessel if Quap goes for it. So, we'll see. We'll see if uh, Molasses chooses to go um, down that route. You watching bottom? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> but again, the lane what is not the lane. What am I watching? 
they have like three waves on die though. What's going on? They need to start right clicking their creeps on raiding. <laughs> this is a bit of an issue. Soon maybe die could make it go with all the creeps advantage they have. Yeah, just look, overwhelm the life stealer. He's only level two, yeah. right? So I'm just gonna be able to do a lot here. He's even getting a pull off to make sure that the wave is well they're trying to get it pulled all the way back, but honestly I feel like I Summer's okay with this, right? He's like, all right, Timber's not really contesting me. Timber's the one making these pulls happen. I'll take it. Oh my god. I don't know this what's happening. You've been a lame for the past two minutes, though. Like, usually it only happens maybe for like one wave where we see, where we see the lane dragged out of where the traditional lane used to be, but. All right, very interesting stuff down bottom. Meanwhile, mid lane, Mar Blue. He's already looking to make his first rotation. They're probably waiting for the spells to be back up on. The, the primal beast and maybe my blue can even secure the border and get a kill off the back of that someone better help die i'm really not tower. sure what the hell's going on here. <laughs> especially on the bottom side of the map right i wonder like jumi he's just used these uh he had a courier deliver him a single clarity and of course he's got the seven stick Fuck, he might come to find first but really nicely done we'll be Return kill though from Fish King, but I recognize that the Queen of Pain stepped up a little bit too far forward while she was trying to close the distance onto the stat fire, then he could pounce on that opportunity and he does just that. So first blood's gonna be given over to the carry on Meteor. Oh, main molasses. He's gonna have to try and TP out as well. Tombstone was laid down from Jumi, but uh, molasses only goes to the T1 tower though, so not all the way back to base. Radiant I mean, I guess the thing on the top side with the clock is A, you're playing into a Slark, so you can't really afford to go the Shadow Strike. And well, even if you did, you're going to be seriously keeping your effect in this later on. And well, they're going to look to make another play onto PPY here. Stun it. Stun quite a lot of PP, though. Will he be able to get away? Doesn't seem like it. So that's a couple of deaths now for this must be clock. And they might not even get the Slark in exchange. Oh, so close. I thought that last battery shot was going to tick him out, but was able to reposition it accordingly. So great rotation out of Echo's yeah, well deserved tip from his teammate as well. And, I mean, as we see that the counterpart, the, the other mid lane, a butterfly effect, back in his jungle, looking to catch up. Bottom lane, oh, a snowball forward, molasses for another round of the Chakram. It might be trouble though, can look to activate the main ghost, he needs the mana to try and do a timber chain. In fact, he's just going to be able to run himself away. Yeah, he's a little low on mana, so obviously you've got to Save that mango for a rainy day if possible, but the cores are farming fairly well on uh, on Radiant, just except for this Queen of Pain, right? I... I'm still kind of puzzled as to what this last big Queen of Pain was for, really. Like, it's, I don't know. I, I guess they just wanted burst magic damage that had a little bit of mobility, I guess, because they know how gank oriented. Team I might die again, never mind. He's gonna be able to get away just this time. Okay. That's gonna die now. Wow, all right. Very interesting rotation out of a Shadow Fiend. Didn't find a power room. Just looking to try and connect top. Saw an opportunity. The corp will still so go down though, TZ. Beautifully done with the combos. Able to catch TZY off guard. We get to slow down the game a little bit. I still, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around what the hell is going on so far because this doesn't feel like the standard ebb and flow of Dota we've been getting for the past, what, well, few months on this, uh, on this patch, right? Oh, like we've got the, the Shadow Feed making these early rotations. I guess using it as, like, that's the one thing I'd probably say that's probably the best move that's happened so far this game is that Butterfly Effect coming up top knowing that they go consistent gags onto this Queen of Pain. And then he's still able to pick up a lot of this farm. At least now he's going to be playing underneath the vision, which TZ just picks out. But maybe Echo was able to push in that middle lane, get a lot of that farm underneath the tower. But by the time you know, the creeps start to hit into the tower, Butterfly Effect is right here. So he is certainly going to be able to achieve that that goal of being the hyper carry for Cactus this game if he continues to play like this. And we do see the Dragon Man to queue up as well. So I wasn't sure if it was going to be the, the magic build, but not the case this game with, with the start that he's had. Top of the net worth, 
Looking to continue that and I guess the, the combo that we even see out of Cactus was something we saw out of Liquid actually a lot at TI where you have Mark II on the live Silo and uh, Mickey playing that Shadow Fiend as well and, and Mark II would go for a little bit more of a um, non-greedy live Silo build. We do see Summer has the ratings queued up though so Cactus probably going to look to play this one very slow with, uh, with the live Silo and uh, this ratings is going to render him pretty useless for 18 minutes. I'm a little surprised he's not gone the armlet style. I was really thinking, you know, you want to be able to brawl into the primal beast when you've got, you know, a few points into that rage, when you've got the armlet, when you're playing against force and heroes. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Mm -hmm. Doing a good job protecting his room. I said he was a bit of an undying spammer, and well, he is, but he's been able to secure that bottom lane fairly well for life stealer up until now. Uh, most just the thing with butterfly effects, like how much of this dragon lance is a full-on commitment into physical damage, and how much of it is, well, it's a pretty good hurricane pike game. You know, just being able to break out of the uh, the leash from the slark, get away from Timbersaw, get away from ice shards, all this sort of stuff. Dyer's middle tower isn't going to last I have five breakout top lane. Echoes is nearby. You can see both supports from Cactus looking to try and play with TZY, so. See how long Echoes wants to stay mid lane though. And in fact, he will actually consider about keeping himself as Pablo is going to look to try and keep him mid to continue to soak some of the experience. So, yep. anything out of this though on Meteor? It's a bit of a heavy committal. It is, but they committed a lot of heroes on, uh, on Cactus as well to expect that that might have been coming. So, at least you're going to get a little bit of this uh, experience soaked up by Marblu. Very important that he got into it, right? He's only just hit up onto the level four at nine minutes in. And what we've been talking about, the importance of that DKB piercing disabled with the walrus punch. So, he's got to make sure he has that one. Marblu has been very impressive. You know, media had yet to find a, a serious victory. Was definitely someone who I enjoyed watching through the previous tour. And even through their losses as well, he's looked pretty good as well. So now he's able to get some experience and go the more than likely so he can get active shortly on the task. He's finally top lane. Actually, more breakout. Cold is going to be a bit of an issue here for Echo. So once again, no one's going to go down. Just a lot of posturing from either side. Spent a lot of time up here doing not that much. You talked about the importance of the clockwork being there, really deters. Shadow Fiend from doing what he wants to do. He can just Radiance use some rocket to continuously harass Marblu. That was quite catch him inside of the cogs there. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. You love a dire playing top though with the slark instead of with the timber down bottom because they get to shove the life still out of the lane. Crew. I'm quite impressed Killed. with what no, he even gets That's a card with the slark. So that was the, the full hood completed for molasses, but. I really like what Slim's doing. He's dragging the wave away from the tower because often the, the tower damage early for the timber is in fact the creeps instead of himself. So, would you like to see Dyer try and come bottom to, to open the tower with timber? I mean, I would, but I would like to see them do it a little bit sooner as well, just because now you're running into a potential requiem. You're running into clockwork with the. Well, he's got his career coming up with now. Um, the time on it. Have that totally. Mike died, so I wonder if this is going to open them up to be able to make a bit of an attempt down bottom. Dire Echo, Snow Marblu, both here. Go for the kill, just it's up onto the level 6 on Marblu as well, with that 11 minute timing. And well, they've got the siege, you be able to play around with the top elapses. So much. Careful about when he walks into it, he's actually been caught out here. Bruce, Summer just get blown up. We've been slow on the beat. Really Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Now Media going to be able to connect that into a T1 tower down bottom as well. So finally they've been able to shut down Summer's Lava Silver. Radiant's bottom tower's got problems. Dyer's middle tower just okay, went down. Radiant's bottom tower's tower fallen. A low butterfly fallen. effect gets a pretty big one. Back to head straight away as well. He's probably going to look to go back to farm towards the triangle, but the Shadow Fiend is continuing to ramp up his, his network. I mean, they're just putting zero attention onto him is the other thing, right? He has been farming under an observer ward that just expired and they still haven't gone for any sort of attempts. Yes, it's important to be able to uh, take that bottom tower, but I'd be real surprised if uh, if Meteor didn't look to make a play towards where that Shadow Fiend is farming in this next little bit. They've got an Invisorin to be able to help them out as well. So uh, we'll see if that's what ends up happening. 
find it hard running into a tombstone, though. You find it hard running into a clockwork with Hog set up. Even, like, unless you can get right on top of Butterfly Effect, he's going to be able to get that Requiem off just to be able to push you back. I do have a lot to cancel the Requiem before the BKB, though, so... See if uh, Butterfly Effect's able to get a, a decent timing for this next team fight to come out, because they're definitely ready to take a fight. Radiance top we, tower just deserves just as much help as bottom. Along with TZ looking once again to try and slow down the heroes around the top side of the map, but I'll not be able to connect with this attempt, so it's they go. You would definitely expect a Primal Beast to have gotten a little bit more involved than he has in this part of this game, right? Like, level 7 is your huge power spike, and they just haven't really been able to do anything to it. He's got three assists, was able to get a kill on that bottom side, but that was more on the lifesteal, just not popping his rage than anything that uh, that your gaming did. And and now it's at the stage where... Radiant's top tower like, with has Like, we're not better. pushing the tempo. Radiant are happy with that. You do have this very hard three core lineup, and especially if the life's going to the Radiance, so I, it means for them, they're probably like, okay, well, right now, let's just get our item, and then we can start to get active across the map. But if in doing so, it means if you miss out on that first team fight that you look to get very aggressive with, then this game can get very awkward. Yeah, I'm seeing guys for those cracks and dire as well. He doesn't have any charges on the urn, and I'm still wondering who he's actually going to be making play with. I'm not going to be able to get the connection, but it looks like it's not fast enough. Rockwork's going to go down as a result to this as well with the more kisses. So, need to go there. We can go there to get two kills. Great use of the ultimates in combination together, and now this tower's going to go down as well. I mean, they would have heard the onslaught coming through, though, as well. And he still just doesn't pop the rage. So, pops a lot of that damage. Once again, fall to the pulverize on the life stealer. And if you're going this really greedy radiance build, just don't think you can afford to do that. He's at least bought the sake of health now to be able to assist with his farming, but he doesn't give you any effective HP at all. Am I in trouble? It's gonna be up in a couple of seconds. One level one blink is very interesting. I'm surprised he's put more levels in Shadow Strike considering he went for a one one two build at level four. He was yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who he's targeting really. It's not gonna be the, the Slark. The Primal Beast has so much HP that he doesn't really care, and he's gonna be able to move around with the uh, the onslaught anyway. Timpsaw's got a hood. So yeah, I'm I'm really not certain. As I mentioned as well, he does have that vessel completed though. So I guess they're just waiting for Shadow Fiend to get into this BKB before they're looking to do anything. He should shift at a pretty equivalent time to Summer having the Radiance, so maybe that's the timing that Cactus are looking to play around. Clockwork as well, not really close to anything. Undying, he's got a straight BKB. He wants to be able to withstand this Tribal Beast and the, uh, the Tim Saw for the time being. Radiance bottom tower's got problems! Well, you just mentioned the radiant timings, but Dyer seems like they've hit theirs there. Slark was able to disassemble the Echo Saber, so he has the Scepter now completed. Clear's here! Oh, closing in on the BKB for the Primal Beast as well, just needs a little bit of gold. And it's go time. I mean, I don't There's no way Radiant with these three heroes are going to be able to kill Molasses, so it looks like maybe the support's acting as a bodyguard just to help someone be able to get a little bit more farm across the map, but... There it goes. I'm just going to see him down, so... Again, it seems like they want nothing to do with being the proactive ones at this stage of the game. It's going to be tired that and making all the plays as we'll see Slark. Try and get some of the essence going. I have to wonder how much it is, like, again, they're, they're happy to be the greedy life, as you said. They've got the Radiance now coming up to Summer. He's going to farm a little bit more effectively. But, like... They gotta be better at responding to a lot of this aggression they have to anticipate that it's coming and get the support ready to counter initiate. You just gotta pop the rage, my guy. So we'll see if uh, Summer is able to do that as they, they are looking to go. Oh, he's gonna be able to charge up the Requiem with control. 
It's actually not enough to bring up the Slark. We'll have an opportunity to try and get that Shadow Dance off and pounce away. So a couple of ultimates Ooh, in conjunction together is, is not enough for Cactus to finally get a kill, which has been quite some time. They've only got two kills. It's 17 minutes in and... Maybe it's down easy, that looks to turn back around, they know there's a bit of a window for the, the ultimate on cooldown. Echo is not going to charge you, someone will finally pop the range, it's going to be okay for the pop the lift to get the blink away, but the pulverize jumped in for an easy way to be able to escape it. Wouldn't that matter though? The Stark saw the crap, but he's jumped into his own death, there's butterfly effect. He's ready to go with the right click, so finally Cactus gets a big turnaround kills. Such a messy game of Tokyo, man. Like, Slark going in for all of his AoE damage that they're able to provide. It's, it's kind of wacky. They used all of their ultimates and didn't kill the Slark on the first go attempt. And they weren't really fighting around some huge objective either. You know, like a, a tower that's going to provide them a little bit of safety. All they really had to play with was this high ground ward that Jimmy had set up previously. So, is there even a winner out of the back of that team fight? I really don't feel like there is. Maybe another fight's gonna break out there once again with the clockwork. Should be able to set up a butterfly. But it doesn't matter. I think regards to the winner, maybe it's just an individual being butterfly effect because he was involved in some of the kills and he's furthering his position in the net worth. Didn't have to use a BKB as well, which is pretty important for the Shadow Fiends. So has that nine second charge. Yep, almost level 15. We'll have the Hurricane Pike as well. So you know, again, pick up that farm as quickly as possible. Got to make sure that you're not venturing too far away from your vision, especially against the Slark lineup at night. Uh, take the, the safest area off the map at this time. Plenty of uh, towers to TP to. You've got the vision of from the multiple jungle wards to be able to play around with. The uh, thing is, though, Slark might also play around as well on a bit of a dewarding mission with Echo Saber to instantly remove a lot of it. So, so, uh, four stars finish. I reckon by 350 goals coming after that, so that's going to be too fine. You don't really care about a death on Fish King at this point if it means that the big killers are on the other side of the map because it's still early enough. 30 seconds on the death card. It does seem like two spirit vessel charges, so maybe they can make yeah. a little proactive action happen. No. Really lacking in lockdown, though. But we definitely feel like it's probably go time shortly Radiance here. Because you, you were mentioning attack. maybe that 15 talents and a whole line with the Radiance, and it seems no like that is the case. Off. So, what, what is maybe. Radiance what's this next fight going to look, look like for Cactus? Where do they want to take it? Tower needs some help. Uh, I mean, to me, it looks power. like they don't have any power to make that decision. Yeah, he's going down again, more permanent energy. Uh, they don't have the power to make that decision, right? Like, maybe they could look to set up the Shadow King push, but he didn't even go to the level 15 town. He's wanting it to level 16 to level it up, just because he feels like, well, everyone else is being run over, not ready to group up just yet. We really want to get into at least Assange on the Lifestealer. So, I don't know, it just feels like the this is some really wonky donor. They're just playing on their own. They're playing away from each other. There's a real cohesive strategy coming out. Playing under a lot of vision as well. One will expire. Fish King. Look at the start on to Marvel, but I don't have to start on to be able to follow up. Butterfly effect is now finally going to show up to the party, but okay, so it's pass it between the two, so my fix and tower. no one will go down as a result. All right, <laughs> sure. Butterfly effect, hang on, mid lane, look at this. An aggressive smoke, Echo's going to jump in. Instant use of the AKB with the pop, the kisses to take control. It's perfect, media will make sure there's no opportunity for the Shadow Feed to activate that BKB. So a big kill on here was in the to top Radiant's of the net worth tower. position and they've got a great position with the bottom cooler as well, so they're gonna get some great damage onto the tower. They will indeed. I'm not Radiant's sure what that was with the undying, like he took the one point in the soul rift, but he had it available that entire time. It was just one of those instances of you're being slammed around so much that you can't actually not click the soul rift onto the hero that's being gone on, but <laughs> just click the portrait of the top. Uh, yeah, bottom tower going down. 
no whip available. The majority of the work. It's very odd, doesn't like it? The, the way that they're playing this. And I mean, got the halberd now on Saba, but see why going to more stuff, second item, he's bottom of the net worth, you're a co-op, you don't have that farming accelerant. They're beating out this uh this illusion from the primal beast, maybe just <laughs> feeling like his behavior was a little bit sussy. Bubble has been doing a good job off the bat for that really quick blink test that he was able to pick up. He's setting up as well on the tree line. Uh, to rotate the top on dial. Just gets ripped apart. And now they can look to try and start another tree. He actually will be able to slither around and, and TP. Oh. In the end, I thought they were going to get a third kill. Nonetheless, though, it is once again a skirmish that goes the way of Meteor. They're still hunting for him, but yeah, he's, he's long gone. I mean, the question of this always is, are you going to be able to get an objective off the back of this? Maybe they're considering going into Roshan shortly, but you know, do just have the one point in the tag team. So maybe they're not feeling uber confident in being able to take it, even with that uh, the Timber Saw. It's like that's what they're checking on Cactus as well, just scouting out if a Roshan attempt was happening. Any other big timings? I mean, Scott is going to feel real nice for a uh, first lock once he picks that one up, both against the Shadow Fiend and Quap, of course, because they're ranged, but even just the spell immunity piercing properties that it has against the last steel, it feels real good. It's to happen to potentially turn it back around, but really all eyes are going to be on Butterfly Effect and what the Shadow Fiend can do. Inside the middle of the team fights, is they want to try to switch this down, Marble? That's actually going to go down. This butterfly effect just tears him apart. The Shadow Fiend is enabled to right click inside the fights. We can truly see how much damage he's able to dish out. Wow, he got so much AP back as well from the Invest coming from Summer. And, and look at this, he's even gone the level 10 talent for the Life Stealer, the Invest Damage talent, which is something that we really okay. don't see. So I, I they, you can tell that they're clearly looking to play a lot more reactionary Dota. It was a lot of unexpected damage that they had coming out the other way. Yeah, you still lose the Quaff, but Timber really shouldn't be dying there. And I just mentioned the importance of him just not popping the hood. Extra 350 absorption that you're able to have. Maybe you get a timber chain away. Maybe a little bit more of that reactive armor that starts attack. sticking in. So I'm gonna stick with it. Odd Dota happening right now. Yeah. Lots of tower has mistakes fallen. that are uncharacteristic for both of these teams. Kind of. Fishkin. Fishkin. We will make him work for Might be able to get the snowborn to the blink away. Oh, he does. Oh, what? Marvelous again. Very nice done. Simultaneously, Butterfly so Effect. Better help Dyer's middle tower. Almost getting caught off guard, but the instant use of the Shadow Blade is going to keep him healthy. So, it's odd though, to though. Looks like it's kind of favoring Radiant. I mean, Cactus still only down a thousand. This is, again, a, a tri core lineup, and you're just starting to get a lot of farm on these heroes. But one in particular that is struggling is the Queen of Pain. So, Maybe it's not that true action tricor with how much farm the court has, but Butterfly Effect is really the one that you've got to be cautious of with the TZ. Go down as a result to this, so we're going to kill on to the snap five, but there's going to be a wraparound. It's so bad to mitigate some of the damage from the Slark, so he'll be forced to pounce away. That is a big Blink dying with the flesh yeah, column at the BKB being popped. I mean, how often do you see a position five first item oh. BKB after the boot, you know? to show how effective of an item is going to be. Oh, bottom. Okay. okay. All right. That's the power of the Blink Dagger coming through from the Primal Beast there. I was just about to mention that before the fire falls out, so you do have this instant way to be able to get onto the life stealer. You're not going to be able to play around the sound cues of the, uh, the Onslaught anymore. That plus the Blink in from the Tusk. There's plenty of ways that they've got to be able to respond to this, uh, this life stealer's failure. 
Hope you get another one as well. Scott, Scott counts up a couple of seconds. He's gonna make sure he lines it up. Top power is under attack. Feast once again onto another member. Uh, just going back with your lifestyle point as well with the control that Chris can provide. This is gonna be almost three seconds of full stun lock duration. But you can go for, of course, that pulverize into the shift Q of the onslaught and, and then soft that as well after the so. And you've gotta have a touch to You've gotta have a snap fire when you they're they're not lacking in lockdown, that's for sure. And there's nothing to break it right now on uh on that. If Summer requires, it will actually consider about beating back on a molasses simultaneously. Butterfly effect, he's got a hate stream. So we can look no to try and charge down TZ. No. They know where the Spark is positioned as well. They've got the water to the high ground. A very awkward position for Dyer to take the fight in now. And so Roche hasn't gone down as well. It's not as weak as maybe I was expecting, though. About two, two thirds of a teleport to play with, but it looks like that's enough for Radiant to maybe walk oh, in wow. and pray in there. I mean, they're still coming in relatively quickly. He's got the last is slowly walking in, walking in here. Final. Not too far away. Good hook shot coming through as well. Be able to block him off. the ages. Summer has that second life to work with. Still down to the south. We see Echoes is in some trouble. Can push up the spirit vessel thanks to the uproar. Simultaneously, Summer will be able to jump on out. But the lack of control, though, for Cactus. They need a continue to make sure they're grouped up so they don't get picked off one by one by this assassin and slark. Another thing is that Molasses is just a little bit short on mana. I think that's the big thing that's preventing them from going in. So they're really not all that scared of playing around this timber saw. Another kill going their way. They force a buyback out of it as well. They play around this Roshan, so... Maybe they're looking to place uh, Summer on the front lines a little bit more. Look at this, he's even holding on to a mask on Black Stealer. Basically said, well, Tusk, you're not going to be the one that makes that immediate jump in onto me. And, well, if you are, then they're going to be lacking a little bit of that extra damage. So it seems like the start of the fights always look the scariest for Cactus when you're, go you're going up against that pulverize into Mortimer Kisses. Well, whenever those two Dyer's ultimates on cooldown, then it seems like it kind of swings a little bit back into Cactus's favor. Would, would you agree with that? I would. I think it's really important that Timbersaw is actually there to be able to connect it. Oh, they got the bash. Uh, to, to connect in onto that initial lockdown, right? Because he's still got a ton of death off the left side and a bunch of deaths. He's got to be forced to pop the beacon. This could be a huge requiem. Slark's able to pounce out at the last second, so it won't be a whole lot of damage onto the carrier media. You'll be talking to the tree line as well, but still regardless, you're going to be able to force out the Rec Room and the BKB for Butterfly Effect for just a kill onto Marblue's task. Gotcha. fairly satisfied about that. Really looking to go for next. I mean, Timber's got a Shiva's queuing up. I don't think that's going to be any, like, massive game changer. I guess it protects a little bit against an eventual Satanic that Butterfly Effect might be looking to go for, but... He is really just not wanting to put himself onto the front line. He wants to join the fight. Keep on lane. Easy why Echoes once again. He didn't get the sh Ooh. Like the there with the that I was really looking for, right? But now the last is kind of on his own, man. You don't have the pulverize to be able to play with in 10 seconds. Look at the damage from Echoes! Sonic Wave's gonna push him away though. Dyer, they're starting to beeline to bottom. They're very close to the team fight as well. Ready if they need to make their mind up. Oh, they're gonna take the fight. Oh, look to tree. Jimmy oh, is in oh, oh. trouble. As soon as the BKB expires, they'll be able to bring him down. And up the Slark trying to turn over to TZY, but he'll just go to the right instead of the life so just runs in solo. Yes, she's got the ages, but the should have been the club. They're not in fighting shape. And as a result, Summer. He's in trouble off the back of the respawn. No Protected with the rage and looks like he will be able to escape. They weren't able to hold him down afterwards. Someone okay. better help Dyer's middle tower. Probably shouldn't have happened, but that's all right. The, uh, the ice shots don't work out every single time, but they still do get a couple of valuable kills. And they still do take away that bottom tier two tower. So I feel like Meteor Gaming are relatively satisfied with how that one turns out, but 
certainly look to get a lot more. The, the real thing that I'm looking for still is Molasses connecting together with his Tusk and Primal Beast. And I, honestly, they can afford to group up right now. I really don't want to see them playing back on their side of the map anymore. I think you're going to take this away from the, uh, the Radiant lineup. They don't have a gem to be able to play around with. They don't have a Slark. They don't have any really easy way to de ward either. They've got a bunch of melee heroes outside of the yeah, separate clock who don't want to be up front under potential vision. So. Butterfly effect. Did not see the shavers? I don't think they did. They didn't. Leading on dire it's top the rib boss. What is going on? Little skirmish is breaking out across the map. Or we'll just the tombstone instantly. Now echoes. He's still got some remnants of haste to catch up. We're going to drop the more of kisses just in case Cactus want to try and follow the line and look to enter Dyer's that team fight, but it will not be the attack. case. Butterfly effects kind of playing a little bit of Rat Dota on this top side as well. Basically saying to the rest of his team, hey, try and bring attention away from this top side, force someone to TP back. Because he does have that Blink Dagger BKB, so he could look to go for a Requiem kill if it is the right sort of hero that moves up here. They've got uh, mm -mm -mm. fighting underneath that uh, that Observer Ward still inside the jungle. I'm a little surprised at how dewarded this uh, dire left side of jungle cliff ward has remained uh, available now it's for radiant previously it was for dire despite the fact that uh has been, uh, been attempted on previously i believe he was even hunting a little bit for that shadow fiend but not able to capture him. he's got his own bkb a lot more confident in just being able to run forward not be forced back by the uh the requiem coming through I have we... to say, even though I haven't really loved the pick overall, I think TZY waves have really been on point, especially yep. protecting the Shadow Dyer's Fiend when he has that DKB already used. Oh, Blue actually jumps. Not really the start they're hoping for a Meteor. But a fight that should be able to get the kill after the Snowball. Oh, he popped BKB as well in a Meteor. Himself, they really need the SF to pump in the right clicks. They can beat them now, but the last two is okay. And our star has got an opportunity to once again jump into the middle of team fight. It's more than an awesome will be able to get onto Teezy. Why does he have the damage just by his lonesome self? Gets rid of the spirit vessel. Teezy Y looks like he's gonna be okay. Oh. Blinks up to the high, gonna provide the vision. Got the onslaught in a couple of seconds. They might look to go for the clockwork instead, but. The jetpack into the TP out. He's okay, and it looks like TZY will also escape. Messy, messy. <laughs> That's all he has to say, right? It just it doesn't feel like there's this big center where a lot of these team fights are going to be able to go around. Oh, not gonna matter. I might have got the. I don't think so. It's a big kill. That is a big one. When you have no vision to play around with. Even going refresh on Echoes as well. We've seen how vital those pulverizers have been inside the middle of the team fights. A little I mean, bit of control. He's even going to have level 25 soon ish, right? So yeah. this is the period that we were talking about where Shadow Fiend. Certainly does drop off a lot. He's still top of the network, but his effectiveness, once these other power types of your opponents come out, they're going to feel so much stronger. I mean, this is another DKB used not that much on the Undying as well. So. Holding onto that plate mail just means that a few more essence chips stacks start to be built up by. Mm -mm -mm -mm, and well, he's even going to use that gem to be able to continue to D ward, take away a lot of this map that they have to play around. To the, to lose their vision. Tower it's too difficult for Radiant's Cactus. middle tower has fallen. They get a good jump. I bet lost their. They bought a gym a couple of minutes ago as well. It looks like they've lost it, so I think they're going to make it even more difficult for them to, to maybe have an even advantage here. So, I mean, we'll see. This this game is now uh, starting to get a little bit out of control. 11,000 net lead for Meteor. 
and it seems like top well, tower is uh, under attack. there's just so much weight on the Shadowfin's shoulders and I don't know if he's going to be able to, to carry the team Radiant's in this one. There's only so much you can do, right? Like, plot for doesn't scale. These items aren't going to enable Radiant's you to scale. The yeah, ultimates could be perfect, but if you just don't have the damage going back the other way against like four heroes that are already really hard to kill, and now they're building into their own BKBs. Now they've got their own uh, aura with the Guardian Green to play around with. There's a Glimmer Cape as well on TV, so you able to avoid a lot of that focus. Good repositioning. They've got uh, four stuff already. Actually, they don't have four stuff. Maybe that's the one thing that they could look to, to pick up now on Meteor to be able to really round things out. Just if those BKBs are forced and it's not the perfect fight, just back off. They're low enough duration yeah. that it's going to be really effective. That have these sort Echoes. of to be able to fight Radiant's around. Middle tower could use some help. Pretty good germstone, but you see the call from media. They just want to retreat. It's well, not the perfect not fight. Just walk the away. Fight. Exactly right. Have to take Great call. Abuse? Just avoid it. Go back to your envision. Tombstone on cooldown. Jimmy popped it with KB. You looked at. You can go back in shortly. In fact, you might not even need to to go back in because you've got ropes up in 20 seconds. So yep. you might just look to wait a little bit and. Pushing the lanes. One is force them to make some sort of a defensive movement around protecting your tier six towers. And yeah, it's all just going to be about staying inside that room. Fifty seconds away, constantly being rocketed at least. Like I think Cactus realized that this is their last fight to be able to play around with. It's going to be a picture perfect fight for them if they're looking to try and find a way no. back into this game. See what the call is going to be. Die. They're starting to see their attention over to the pit, and they're going to group up as well to get ready for a smoke. Summit did just complete the beacon. He's got a lot of magic immunity inside this team fight. They double smoked as well. Cactus, so they're a little bit rattled. They'll make sure they can get there fast enough. Good positioning by Marble as well. This is the break. Come on, Mark. Turn it back around now. A lot was committed to start the fight. It was met by the fire festival. So with the BKB on the shadow field to work with, Mark. it's going to be an in and out dance for the Slark in particular. Looking to try and steal a little bit of essence to back off and region up. They really just want to wait for that tombstone to expire. That's the thing that's stopping the Slark from being able to consistently play around that shadow dance. And oh, there we go. It has gone away. They don't have Tombstone. They don't have BKBs. They still do have one on the last door, though. So he's going to do another one. Oh, 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 Echoes. He's holding Butterfly Fake in the place as well. So the main damage source. He can finally look to activate the B. He's going to try and charge up the Requiem as well. There's just going to be nothing outside the left. In the tank is Meteor. Go look for the cleanup. A snowball pops. King's gonna go down as well. And off the bat with a successful team fight, Die can reap the rewards as Roche is all theirs for the taking. It always kind of felt like the game would reach this point, didn't it? You know, they've just got so many responses to everything that they just have to throw at them. And me we haven't seen the last of they've even got the, uh, an Ogre Seal turn to play around with on the task. I've been really impressed by, once again, how Marble is playing this one. Always being able to shout the right targets at the start. He didn't necessarily break the uh, the initiation there that time around. He prevented the rest of the team from coming in onto that initial burst, which is why they were only to get uh, able to get a single kill at the very beginning. Little things as well. We just saw as soon as the Requiem is getting charged up, Slark, he didn't mind about eating all the damage. He just popped that dark pack, so he was juiced instantly and then back to getting the uh, the right clicks out onto the Shadow Fiend. So, yep. Meteor just excelling inside the middle of the team fight. And Mablu had held his own BKB, so he was able to just pop it right in the SF's face. Took zero damage from the Requiem and then was able to stay on top of him, making sure that there was no way for him to be able to escape with any kind of weird TP play. fortified their structures. Mark's actually chosen to go the extra one second on the Shadow Dance duration as well. I don't hate it. You know, up against a, a lot of melee that's going to be needed to be able to take you down. 
he doesn't even, oh, he's got to be backpacked, but like, you've got that to be able to play around with, plus the ages, plus the magic resistance from the Bloodborne. And like you mentioned, he's really been on point with that Dark Pact as well in response to the Requiem, so. Go! I, uh, I like this. So, uh, what do you think the percentage rate is that they take the Essence Shift duration as opposed to the Dark Pact? Ooh. I'm actually not sure. Is the 70 30? Uh, 80 20. Okay. I would say that's probably about right. Are the odd games where we're up against all this melee with no way to get into it. It just feels like, all right, don't kill me. I'll take it. <laughs> even Maybe even it. helps. Private Lily level 25. I'd say that's probably the last thing that they're waiting for. You can look to farm this wave under vision on the bottom side. Relative safety. Might look to quickly burst it out and then blink away, but it's actually Shadow Fiend that's the one that's more scared of him. They're starting to pounce up down the bottom. See if go. they can catch up butterfly effect before he get back to the safety of his high ground. What did he go? Did he go the... duration? Okay. Maybe just feeling like they are able to kite these fights enough that it's not going to be that big of a deal. And then if you can just keep someone locked down for all that time, why not? I don't even feel like it's really going on to the clockwork first, considering you know he bought back in that previous Roche fight. And again, he's the only one that's going to be able to stop a, uh, a BKB pulverized. Uh, I guess the Lifestealer, right? if he's got the, the Basher, but True. I would say the Lifestealer probably is the target to go on to. I think the Clockwork is the, the person to enable the Shadow Pin on this higher ground. So if you just kill him, it's a free kill. It's not going to take a lot. 2100 health, he's going to be down for 70 seconds. It's just an easy kill to get that 4v5. They just use Sonic Wave up top just to be able to get these lanes out a little bit. So I wonder if they've got information about that. On the lane, there's the jump in. Gonna be able to kick away by Fly Effect to the right ground, the Shadow Fiend. He's in a wonderful position, which can stand so up the back of the BKB, but once it expires, Butterfly Effect needs to be cautious in all of his positioning. It's not like he recognizes. Can continue to charge up. Refresher's gonna be activated to get that pounce away. You don't want to lose the ages, it looks like, but Boom, one go. goes down and you have to still continue to hold the high ground. They will. That was on Echo. He, you see him there with the voice line. He says sorry. He uses the BKB, jumps in, but isn't able to get the pulverize because finally something just pops his rage in response to an aggressive kill attempt. So because he didn't go the spell immunity talent, because he went the duration, isn't able to get that initiation on, and then feel confident enough to go. And of course, he doesn't want to use the refresher, just refresher BKB, so they're forced to back off. They'll only have about 10 or so seconds to make another one of those plays while still having the Aegis as well, so what Meteor Gaming choose to do if it's going to close a, a bit of a window that they had to close the game or they're just still going to go for it. On the lane, Marblu. Oh, they don't kick someone up on the higher ground. Still, he, he needs an impest target. Is he going to be able to find one though? So I'm going to take him with a dying spot. Nice. Oh, he's going to get played off the top. Oh, he's going to get played off the top. He's still struggling to find a pulverized target though. Right? If they've done a great job to reset. Give their high ground, but Echoes, he still wants the look to go in. Is the Queen of Pain going to move out of Butterfly Beck? We'll be able to charge up the ultimate. It's enough to get the one kill. Now Marble's in trouble as well. The snowball further down to the low ground, but they've got the vision. They're a little bit more damage and they've got it up. Marble will stay alive and now Molasses, he's looking to hit back. They will force up the buyback out of TZ. Why those some media? Paying some respect. They look to reset the position, but for how long? I want to go back here. They yeah, don't have the ages to be able to play around with that. That went well for uh, for Meteor, but even then, it wasn't perfect, right? Like you had the ages, you had the BKB to be able to play around with on the Slark. You hit finally that uh, long duration pulverize, but you had Snapfire outside the base. You had Dinosaur outside. The base. You had Slark with ages and BKB outside the base. So I'm like, wait, come on, guys. The time is now to be able to move on forward and oh, it means you don't get usage out of that refresher either on the primal. Felt like the game could have ended just then and they were all on the same page. Oh, oh, I should go down a lot of damage with the raise thanks to the 25 talent. Now that's what probably gonna give Butterfly Effect enough gold to have the Arcane Blink plus buyback. Actually, needs a little bit. 
the neutral items, unfortunately for him. And a razor fly in the attack damage feels pretty nice, though. Ooh, okay. I kind of want to see the life skiller get that aseptics cap. If you're getting gone on, you've already got some status resistance coming through from your halberd. The life aesthetics cap is just going to provide you that that way to be able to avoid that initial burst. Especially if the uh, the primal is able to find you with that level 25 talent in duration on it. I think they got a glimpse of some are. It will cancel out, pulverize, and our echoes. No. And up to tuning as well. No bash. He's going to be able to make it away. No bash. Because he doesn't have a basher. Uh, the, <laughs> the Shadow Feed at least was able to get the uh, the money for buyback off the back of that. But again, remember, it's a Shadow Fiend. He's got 12 souls at the moment. So really not that big damage dealer that we've come to expect. And it's going to push in bot and mid. Look to play around this again. Pulverize is almost back up. Oh, it is back up. I guess Refreshing Radiant up. fortified their structures. Thank you, of course. There's one person shows Marblu. She can get away. There's the instant kill on Jenny. I'm trying. And there's the fireback's force. They're going to get nothing out of it. This team will try. A great cook is going to be able to protect Marblu. They still want to dive deeper inside. Uh, okay. What is he really going to be able to do? They'll turn their attention back over towards the Spark, but they're just lacking the control and the damage. Spark will stand strong with the activation of the Refresher. For the second round of the Shadow Dance. Butterfly Effect, he'll finally get that Arcane Blink into the Requiem, but... It's just not on damage. top of anyone. No, yeah. yeah, there's nothing. No one was on top, so... Radiance Middle Tower could use some help! Play with their food a little bit right now on uh, Meteor and for good reason. I mean, falling. from the draft, I feel like these are the guys that had it available to themselves and yeah, they're not even going to go for that one last defense. GG getting called by Snot on the Lime Stealer. This was a draft issue for Lime, plain and simple. You know, like I was just really confident with Meteor, even though I feel like Captain's are. Probably the better team in terms of their execution in game. I think it probably should have gone for the 49 minute mark. I think they had plenty of opportunities to close out the game until he.